Recently, I've been wanting to make my own yard game for my son and I to play on our back lawn. I wanted it to be something fun and inventive, and that could also be used to chuck eggs at my neighbor's house. So naturally, I gravitated towards medieval siege engine weaponry. I sketched out my take on a trebuchet-style catapult, and then I finished it out with Infusion 360. Once I had it completely modeled, I could test and tweak the design so that the trigger mechanism would function just the way that I had intended. So this is what I'll be making today. A couple of trebuchets to play with in the backyard, and to ward off any potential enemy invaders. One of the really cool things about Fusion 360 is that it can simulate the toolpaths for the CNC, so that you can see exactly how the pieces will be cut out. Additionally, it can export all the necessary G-code that I need for the piece to be imported into the software for my Inventables X-Carve. Then I can take that file and bring it straight into Easel, and my piece is ready to cut out, just like that. Now since the main swing arm for my trebuchet is too long for the X or Y axis of my CNC, I had to mount it diagonally to get it to fit. And to hold it down, I just added some painter's tape to the workpiece and to the wasteboard, and then put on some CA glue to hold it very securely. Setting the home position, and then letting the CNC do its thing. While that was cutting, I could start to cut down some scrap plywood I had liberated from a friend's bathroom remodel project. I'm not sure if he was planning to remodel his bathroom, but I needed the plywood, so here we are. Once I had that clamped down onto the X-Carve, I could kick off the next job. And here it is cutting out one of the trebuchet side pieces. This really was a great project to finally use all the little scrap pieces of plywood that I've been saving for years. I told you I'd use them someday. Also, I thought a 1 8 inch straight cutting bit would be the best to cut out all the pieces. I just figured that this will leave small enough rounded corners on the box joint pieces that need to fit together that it won't take much persuasion during glue up. Now there was a total of 11 pieces to cut out on the X-Carve and it really made short work of it. There definitely is something to be said for the efficiency and accuracy of an X-Carve. With all the cuts completed, I could snap the pieces free from their tabs and then do a little sanding to clean them up. Now it was time to pop the sides into the base with a bit of glue. I spaced out the tops, clamped it up, and then set it off to dry. The counterweight box went together smoothly with a little persuasion. The plywood was soft enough where any gaps that remained could just be closed up when I squeezed it with the clamps. So you may be wondering why I even added wheels to the design if they don't turn. The reason is twofold to raise things up so that the swing arm can be pulled back further and to more easily make it stable on uneven surfaces. If you wanted the trebuchet to throw even further, you could make the wheels turn, but I didn't necessarily want this thing to throw the tennis ball into the neighboring county. Just across the lawn is fine. Next, I needed to make some wood bushings to be spacers for the counterweight box. Since I don't have a lathe or a hole saw this small, I figured I could get a bit creative by using a drill and a sander. Well, that works surprisingly well. And now I could get the counterweight box mounted. Alright, let's make some more of those, but for a larger bolt that holds the swing arm onto the sides. A little bit of CA glue holds the pieces together. Just 
chuck them into the drill, and make some sawdust. Well, that'll work. Not bad for not having a lathe, right? Next up, I countersink the mounting hole for the release bar and then find just the right spot to fasten it onto the side so that it holds the counterweight box at the appropriate height. With that done, I can locate the right spot for the trigger and then get that put on as well. And just because it drives some of you nuts, I chose to use the ugliest and nastiest flathead screw that I could find. Putting in a small eye screw for the pull string. And now I get to recall my fifth grade home economics skills so that I can cut out and make a pouch for the trebuchet sling. I used a canvas-like material and then crimped on some grommets on either side. Now I'm ready to put on the sling. So I add another eye screw to the end of the swing arm and then start to measure things out. The length needs to be the same as the long end of the arm, so I just threaded some paracord through and knotted in the correct spots. Then I just cut off any excess and burn the ends because I'm a pyromaniac. The other end of the sling gets looped around the pin on the end of the arm. This is slightly angled to allow the sling to release the projectile at just the right time during launch. Once I started using the trebuchet, I had to adjust the pin just a bit so that I could dial in the perfect angle in order for it to release at the optimal time. With that screwed in, all I had to do was tie a small loop in the paracord so that once I hooked it on, the pouch would still hang evenly. Now some guy that probably skipped his high school prom to play D&D figured out that the counterweight needs to be exactly 133 times the weight of the projectile for it to achieve the optimal distance. Now I found somebody selling these huge lead sinkers online, but I needed to hammer them into shape so that they would fit. And once I got it into a square enough shape, I dropped it into the box. So I loaded up the counterweight box with a few of these and got it to just the right weight. And with that, I had my first trebuchet. Now because not everyone has a CNC, I wanted to make the second one with just a jigsaw and a drill. So I printed off all my templates and then pieced them all together. Then with some craft adhesive, I could stick them onto some pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood. Doing it this way allowed me to orient the templates in a way where I could really minimize the amount of waste that I would have. Once I had them all glued on, I'd use my drill to punch a hole into the mortises and then I'd cut out the rest of the material using my jigsaw. I actually surprised myself with how accurate I am with this saw. I'm thinking of opening up my own LASIK eye surgery practice if you happen to be interested. Then it was just a whole lot of cutting to work my way around the piece to trim off the rest. Now for the wheels, I found it easiest to cheat a bit and use the disc sander. But I won't bore you with the rest. It was just a lot more of the same that you already saw before, so here's a quick montage of it all going together. And there we go, a second trebuchet. 
Now I can go outside and wage war on my son. I made two of these little black tables out of scraps of 2x4s and OSB. A quick coat of black paint and they were just what I needed to hold up my targets. And after a wild soft drink bender, I saved up enough cans to make my targets. And I could stack them up in a castle-like fashion. I marched the other trebuchet downrange and set up a second castle target over there as well. Then I'm ready to load this thing up and give it a try. To do that, I load the tennis ball into the pouch, hook the sling onto the pin, push down on the swing arm, and then secure it with the trigger. I make sure that it's aimed just right, and then stand back with the pull string to get ready to launch it. And here it is in slow motion. The neighborhood kids sure had fun launching it, and after some practice, eventually got it dialed in pretty consistent. Yeah! All right. And then we were breaking down castle walls left and right. This sure was a fun project to make, and if you'd like to make it too, I'll have step-by-step -step plans available on my website at fishershoponline.com. The X car from Inventables sure made it easy, and if you're interested in configuring one for your shop, I'll have some links in the video description where you can go to do just that. Hey, thanks so much for staying and watching, and until next time, take care. Well, crap. I guess I measured that one wrong. Nice. I didn't even drill all the way through. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Well, it did nothing. Great. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> Stupid wind. All right, go ahead. Ah, uh, too short. Oh, she's got her ball. Oh, no.